So we said in the fatherhood of God, the fatherhood of God therefore provides the sacrifice. So like we said, just like David, David also spoke using a first person pronoun and when he spoke those things, it sounded like he was talking about himself but like the prophets of the Old Testament, he wasn't talking about himself. Rather, he was talking about someone else. It's the indication narrative. You find that it happened to David, it happened to Abraham. You know, in 2 Samuel chapter 7 verse 11, examining David. And as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, and I've caused thee to rest from all thine enemies. Also, the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee an house. If your Bible was mine, I will underline the word an house. The word an house means a family, because we are tracing the fatherhood of God. A family. Look at that second Samuel chapter 7 verse 12 and house or a family second samuel 7 12 and when thy days be fulfilled and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers i will set up thy seed after thee which shall proceed out of thy bowels and i will establish his kingdom the word set up is the hebrew word gong q u m it means to raise like raise up from the dead i will set up I will raise. Look at that second Samuel chapter 7 verse 13. He shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Is that Solomon? Huh? Is he talking about Solomon? No, he's not talking about Solomon. Now, when David was teaching the children of Israel, which books was he reading? Genesis to Deuteronomy. He was teaching them from Genesis to Deuteronomy. So, could David have heard the promise that was made to Abraham? Yeah. David is talking about someone else. Just like Abraham was talking about someone else. Isaac speaks of someone else. Isaac. So, they were talking about someone else. Remember, the conversation in Acts chapter 8 between the eunuch and Philip. He said, who is this prophet talking about? Is he talking about himself or of some other man? Because all the prophets of the Old Testament spoke as if they were speaking for themselves, but actually they were speaking for someone else. Who was he talking about himself or some other person? And then he got helped. Beginning at the same scripture, he preached unto him Jesus, which means he went back to Genesis and took him through and said, this is about someone else. Everyone was talking talking about someone else that's why the focus of the scripture was not on the personalities the focus of the scriptures is on jesus because the personalities are vessels they are sufficient enough to get us to the perfect vessel they are sufficient enough personalities to get us to the perfect vessel the characters of the old testament were sufficient enough to get us to the perfect vessel talking about christ himself just like moses moses also talked about somebody else moses spoke about someone else if jesus speaks about someone else then he is not the christ if jesus speaks about someone else then he is not the christ moses spoke about someone else isaiah spoke about someone else abraham spoke about someone else Isaac spoke about someone else, but Jesus did not speak about someone else. If Jesus had spoken about someone else, then he's not the Christ. You know, sometimes the Muslims, they miss Jesus' teaching on the Allos Paracletos. The Muslims, when they hear about the Allos Paracletos, another comforter, they say that that another comforter is Muhammad. That Isa is the prophet. That Jesus is a prophet who spoke about another that was coming. And they said the another that was coming is prophet, prophet Muhammad. <laughs> prophet, prophet Muhammad is the comforter. <laughs> How is Muhammad a comforter? A man who died not knowing where he's going and begs all his followers to pray for him. That's why all the followers of Muhammad, before they call his name, they will say a prayer. May God have mercy on prophet. That is, prophet Muhammad is not sure of mercy. He's not sure of where he's going and he is comforter. Where is comfort in that? A man is not sure of where he's going. How is that a comfort? They don't call his name till they say a prayer because the man doesn't know where he's going. 
and the Quran says, the Quran says, it's written in black and white that Jesus will judge the world. So if Jesus will judge the world and prophet Muhammad is not sure of where he's going, if I was them, I will take sides with the one that will judge the world. Won't just take sides with another. Jesus emphatically said he's not a prophet. He emphatically said, I'm not a prophet. In Matthew chapter 16 verse 13. Look at it. Matthew chapter 16 verse 13. And um, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesar at Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I the son of man am? Next verse. And uh, they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist prophet. Is that a prophet? John the Baptist, is he a prophet? Some say Elias. Elijah, is he a prophet? Some say, and others, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, is he a prophet? Or one of the prophets. Next verse. He saith unto them, if people think I'm a prophet, you, whom say ye that I am? Because I'm not a prophet. I'm not one of them prophets. I'm the one the prophets were prophesying about. I am the termination of their prophecies. I am the destination of their unction. I am the buyer. And Peter said, Thou are the Christ, the Christos, the anointed one, and his anointed, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Blessed art thou, Simon Bajona. This does not come by flesh and blood. This comes by revelation. I'm not a prophet. I am the Christ. The son. I am God become a man. Son means God taking on humanity. I am the son of the living God. I know some Christians struggle to defend it. Because they cannot explain the, the, the allos paracletos. They can't explain the another comfort. If Jesus speaks of someone else, then he is not Yahweh. If someone else will come to do the work, then Jesus is not Yahweh. If someone else will be involved in it, then he is not Yahweh. If anyone will have to send someone who is not him, or speak of someone who is not him to do the work, then it's not the Yahweh that we read of. Because... The Yahweh is the I am that I am. And I will be what I will be. He is almighty. The one that supplies what they will need. So look at what Moses says about Jesus. In Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 15. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee of thy brethren. Like unto me. Unto him you shall hearken. Unto him you shall hearken. According to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more, that I die not. So Moses said, The Lord will raise. That word raise is the word guam in the Hebrew. Q U M. It means being raised from the dead. Being raised from the dead. He will raise. He will raise him. Him shall you hear. The one that will be raised from the dead. Him shall you hearken unto. Deuteronomy 18.18 18. I will raise the word kum. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee. And will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. This is interesting because Moses had already ordained Joshua. Joshua will take them to Canaan. So when Moses was talking about raising another, he wasn't talking about Joshua. Just like Abraham, just like David, he is speaking about the seed. He will raise up, raise up from the dead. So the prophet Isaiah is also prophesying about is the servant, his servant. But he says, this servant is rejected of men. This servant will bear the iniquities of us all. Then Isaiah said, I am not this servant. There is a servant that will bear the iniquities of all. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him by his stripes. We are healed. Isaiah cannot say that about himself because he is from a wealthy family. And Isaiah was dressing well. But look at what he says of Jesus. Isaiah 53 verse 2. Isaiah 53 verse number 2. 
For it shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He had no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty in him that we should desire him. Isaiah describing who this servant is. It cannot be Isaiah because Isaiah didn't fall into any of these adjectives. So when we read this prophet of God, we need to know that they are spokespersons. The prophets were spokespersons. And if you know what a spokesperson does, a spokesperson, we call him like a publicity secretary of an organization who comes to address you on behalf of another. A spokesperson speaks about what someone else will do. So both Moses, Abraham was a prophet. What about Isaac? What about Isaac? He was a prophet also. What about Moses? What about David? So they are spokespersons. 